Hi, this is Peter Titian, Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 13 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating treatment of a native coronary artery lesion through a long and tortuous bypass graft. That is why we entitled it uh, Around the World. The patient was a 69-year-old man with previous coronary bypass. He had a lima to LAD and a Y graft, vein graft to M with a radial jump graft to the PDA and the posterior lateral vessel. Multiple previous PCIs, he had non occluded saphenous vein graft, and he presented with cardiogenic shock. The diagnostic angiography is fascinating and took us a while to fully understand it. We have injection from the native right coronary artery, and then that feeds through the right posterior descending artery. So flow through the right native coronary. This is the right posterior lateral vessel. And then that feeds retrograde the radial jump graft. So this is the posterior lateral vessel. This is the radial graft. This is the posterior descending artery, which is a CTO from the distal right coronary artery. And then there is continued filling through that radial jump graft. And even though the saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal is occluded in the proximal portion, the portion of the graft that is distal to the Y is actually patent and is filling retrograde from this radial jump graft into the first obtuse marginal branch, which actually had a significant lesion right at the distal anastomosis. So we had a significant lesion into the uh, first obtuse marginal, the saphenous vein graft to the first obtuse marginal branch that was a very long distance from the ostium of the right coronary artery that was providing flow to this vessel. And this is the same illustration, native right coronary, posterior lateral, PDA, radial graft, vein graft to obtuse marginal, and the target lesion right next to this um, clip. The patient had a patent lima to LAD without any disease. And therefore, the target lesion here was the uh, native obtuse marginal of the distal anastomosis. Wiring all the way to that lesion was challenging, but was achieved using the longest available microcatheter, which is the Micro 14. It is 155 centimeters in length, as well as a polymer jacketed wire, which was the filter FC. We used the long wire to reach this lesion. We then uh, stented the mid-RCA that had some disease in order to also facilitate advancing a guide catheter extension. We did insert a guide liner all the way to the distal right coronary artery. And by doing that, we were then able to advance a balloon to reach all the way to the target lesion. As you can see from the two, it was very challenging getting there. There was very little part of the balloon left before reaching the target lesion. The balloon shaft was 144 centimeters, which highlights the importance of knowing the length of the different balloons. For example, the uh, trek is 143 in the monorail, 142 for the euphora, and 144 for the emerge. However, when we look at the over the wire balloons, the spreader over the wire actually is 152 million centimeters long, so it can be useful for uh, very, very distal lesions. Similarly, with the stems, there are differences in the lengths, as well as 140. The Synergy is 144, and the Zion's um, um, Alpine and Expedition is 145. We then tried to deliver a stand, and we had significant difficulty advancing a 28 millimeter stent. You see the stent here coming up from uh, the through the graft, advanced all the way to the uh, target lesion. That stent didn't make it. However, we then used shorter stents, and this is very important when it's hard to deliver a long stent. One way around it is by using shorter stents that are more flexible and easy to deliver. And then we're able to deliver two 2.5 by 12 millimeter stents all the way to the target lesion. This provided a nice final result with um, successful expansion of those lesions. The patient had um, a recovery, although he did have a prolonged hospital stay due to pneumonia. 
This case provides several take-home messages that have to do with wiring and delivering equipment through long and tortuous segments in previous bypass patients. One common challenge to overcome is tortuosity. We had several angles to overcome, going into the posterior lateral, getting into the radial graft, all the way to the lesion. One way to achieve this is by using a microcatheter, sometimes using an angled microcatheter, such as the Supercross 120 or the Venture, can help navigate through these areas of tortuosity. Also, using polymer jacketed wires, such as the field that we've seen in this particular case, help navigate those turns and go all the way to the lesion. Of course, it's ideal after wiring to remove this wire and use a workhorse guide wire because the polymer wires might have slightly higher risk of distal vessel perforation if they move. The second key challenge is to deliver equipment through these tortuous and uh, far down lesions. And to achieve this, it's important to use short guide catheters. 90 centimeter guides are routinely used in CTO PCI and are routinely available. Using long guide wires, using long microcatheters like the Micro 14, which is 155 centimeters long, and also using guide catheter extensors that can straighten tortuosity and enhance deliverability. Finally, it is important to know the lengths of the balloons and um, the stands the length of the shaft, and using the longer shaft balloons and stands. In some of those cases, as you saw before, it can literally be an issue of two or three centimeters before reaching the lesion or not. Thank you very much.